Hello world, it's the Surfing Scratcher here bringing you another video connecting the world of maths to Scratch. If you haven't already, check the description below for links to previous videos as this one is part of a series. In this video, we're going to take our plan that we created in the previous video and we're going to translate those English sentences into Scratch code blocks. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, so here we are back in our Scratch project for now. I'm inside the card sprite and I'm back at our custom block here, calculating on image to move. What I'm going to do now is just move the scratch project uh, along to the side just to have it side by side our planner project just so it can make it nice and clear to see what we need to do. Okay, so let's just start at the top. We know that uh, imaginary up here is calculate number of images to move. So this would be our first line of code that we need to actually code. So if the variable operation is the addition or positive sign. So really nice if we're using words like if we know that there are control statements in there and there's definitely an if statement that we can use so if the variable operation well let's go get that variable operations around here somewhere is equal to or is the addition sign so that's going to be an operator <laughs> the uh, we need an operator so let's get the uh, equal the comparison operator and we'll stick our operation in there. So if the variable operation is the addition sign or the positive sign there. And you'll see that uh, this puzzle piece, this operator statement, fits nicely into our statement. So now we have just done that top line of code. If the variable operation is the positive sign, then we want to set the variable number of integers to move. So that's a variable. That's pretty easy to go and get. That's set block. That's the just, uh, we're not setting the balloon to move, we're setting the numbers of integers to move to the variable integer. Okay, well let's go do that. Okay, so we've actually accounted for all uh, of the code up the top here for our addition scenarios. Let's now account for our subtraction scenarios. So we need another if statement. Now we could go in uh, and get all these things out of the library again. But I'm a coder and I like to do things the easy way and I'm just gonna go duplicate that block there because we've already got a lot of the stuff we need. We're repeating the if statement, we're repeating the operation. What we're not repeating is the sign. This time we need the subtraction symbol. This time we're also gonna be setting the number of integers to move to not just the integer this time. So we need to set it to zero minus the variable. So to be able to do that, we're going to jump back into our operators and we're going to look for the one where we have the subtraction operator, which is this one just here. So we need to set it to zero, which is what it says there, zero minus the variable integer. If we do that, we can slot that one straight back up there. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm just going to drag our scratch window back across because we're done with our planner. We've actually plugged in all of our bits and pieces that we need to, just going to increase the side of our view there. So what I'd expect now is when we press this green flag and we start our game and we deal our cards, we're no longer gonna get this call out instructing us to uh, work out or put input into this custom block. Um, we would expect whatever result the user inputs now for the, the bat to actually say the right calculation because it wasn't happening last time. So let's do that. Here we go. We've got a subtraction operation and we're taking away the positive integer five, okay? So currently our player one is at zero. We need to take away five. So I would expect us to be at negative five. So over here, um, where this is entering into, it's going, okay, if our operation is positive, well, no, it's negative. So if our operation is negative, yep, we're inside here. We're going to set the number of integers to move to zero minus the integer. So the integer is five, zero minus five is just negative five. Okay, so negative five. Correct, great. Uh, but we still need to program the next part of it. That's cool, we will get to that. Uh, let's just go through another example. Um, we just know that it worked for the subtraction. So let's see if we can get a positive operation. There we go, straight off the bat. So now, where is our balloon gonna end up? Well, if our operation is positive, and it is, great. We're gonna set the number of images to move to 
the integer. Yep, so where the integer here is positive six, so we're just going to set our answer, well, we'd expect our balloon to end up at six. So let's go and do that now. And it looks like our balloons are actually moving. Uh, it's just the animations and the feedback that we need to actually hook up. Great, that's correct. We need to uh, still program that custom block to say the move type for the bat to give feedback and for these animations to happen. So our balloon will move, but nothing happens with our animation. Awesome. So I hope that really spelled it out to you how this, this um, code block works uh, based on the result of our operation and integer. That's all for this video. In the next one, we need to move on to the next part that we need to fix, which is all about saying the type of move that our balloons made and giving the users feedback. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay connected to when I release more content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But until then, I'm off to go find a way. Take it easy.